Hello and welcome to another video by Haste Computer Repair. And today we're taking a look at the Lenovo ThinkPad L480 laptop for use in 2024 and onward. Now this laptop is very similar to the T480 and one of the main differences I found was the variety of CPUs. With the L480 you have lower end options which I'm guessing led to a cheaper overall price at launch date. You can see here with the T480 it's a little more higher end and you get CPUs with a slightly higher clock speed and cache. There also appears to be an AMD version of a discrete graphics card on the L480 while the T480 has a Nvidia discrete GPU. One of the other differences is the input and output. The L480 has a micro SD card reader, while the T480 has a regular 4-in-1 SD card reader. The L480 has a integrated 45 watt lithium ion battery, while the T480 has an external battery and the optional internal battery. And the L480 does not seem to support Thunderbolt, which the T480 does and could be the deciding factor between using the two. Those are the major differences that I noticed while studying the spec sheets, so I suppose it really depends on what you want to use a laptop for. It's very likely that I'm missing something, so please let me know in a comment below. On to the general hardware specs of this L480 I have. There's an Intel Core i5-8250U CPU with 4 cores and 8 threads. And this supports 2400MHz DDR4 RAM, of which I have 16GB installed. There's Intel UHD Graphics 620, and I'm fortunate to have the 14-inch 1920x1080 Full HD display. There's Windows 11 installed on a 256GB Samsung PM9A1 NVMe solid state drive. And lastly, there is a Intel Dual Band Wireless AC8265 Wi-Fi M.2 card that features Bluetooth 4.1. This is the typical six row keyboard characteristic of this generation of ThinkPads. There's no backlit option on this particular keyboard, but you can always order one to replace this. There's the characteristic red track point in the middle if you choose to use it. And I personally really enjoyed the option of having these three buttons up here, which makes using the track point that much more intuitive. And there's a very nice Mylar Surface multi-touch touchpad. The 720p webcam is what you'd expect. The internal speakers are not terrible. Of course, the addition of a Bluetooth speaker or headphones will greatly improve that experience. The left I.O. features a USB Type-C charging port, an additional USB Type-C port with power delivery and display port, a USB 3.1 always on, HDMI 1.4V port, a micro SD card reader, a nano SIM card slot, RJ45 Ethernet port, and the optional smart card reader port which this laptop currently does not have installed. The top and bottom surface of the laptop are a mixture of PC and ABS plastic. The bottom surface of the laptop features air intake for the CPU fan, what I'm going to assume is passive ventilation. A couple holes that I'm going to judge are for when liquid is spilt on top of the keyboard. And this middle section up here I believe holds a docking station in place. Now before we take a look inside the laptop, you want to power it on, begin hitting the enter key when you see the Lenovo splash screen. For some reason the menu is really small, but you want to hit F1 to enter BIOS. Once inside BIOS, navigate over to config, down to power, and down to disable built-in battery press enter, and yes, we want to proceed. So doing this will ensure that you have cut off power to the system and should prevent you from shorting out the system by removing components. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, we can now remove the screws on the bottom panel. Now using something like a flat plastic guitar pick, we can begin to score along the palm rest to remove the back panel, plastic because it won't mark up the case. So here we have the integrated lithium ion battery that's held in by three screws and connected to the motherboard with this connection right here. 
If you forget to disable the battery and BIOS, you can always disconnect it from the motherboard here. Over here is the caddy for the SSD. And as I mentioned before, we do have a NVMe Samsung solid state drive installed. Now, theoretically, this should provide a little boost in performance over the installation of something like a 2.5 inch SATA 3 solid state drive or a M.2 SATA 3 SSD. Either way though, depending on the caddy that you have or the one that you order, you can have an option for all three. Over here is our two DIMM slots for RAM. In the product specifications, it lists the max as being 32 gigabytes, but maybe you can install up to 64. If you have this, let me know in the comments below. Over here is the M.2 Wi-Fi card with Bluetooth. Right beside that is a WWAN port, which carries the second function of being compatible with an extra solid state drive. What I have here is a M.2 SATA 3 2242 transcend solid state drive that I could install if I wanted to dual boot or have extra storage. Here we have the CPU fan and the heat pipe. If you wanted to add new thermal paste and clean up your system, it's as simple as removing these four screws and gently lifting up the heat pipe. Just note that the CPU fan is tethered to the motherboard with this connection right here. I've already applied new thermal paste and cleaned out the CPU fan, so I will not demonstrate that in this video. So that covers the basics, and of course this is the area where you'd find most of the cable connections for the display panel, touchpad, etc. If you have any questions about the replacement of any other hardware, just let me know in the comments below and I'll lead you in the right direction. For those of you who want to edit videos on a budget, I installed the free version of DaVinci Resolve, and I currently have just over 11 minutes of of 1080p. Just the simple process of moving clips around and making cuts and audio edits, it performs fairly well. And let's see how long this takes to render. As we see here, it took 24 minutes and 46 seconds to render this video. Now that's certainly not bad, especially if you're on a budget. I suspect if you're wanting a quicker output, you'd be looking at something a little more beefier than the L480. However, at Haste Computer Repair, we always appreciate work on a budget. Now it's time to record some gameplay. I've got my Steam SSD hooked up to the USB Type-C port. And I have the HDMI cable connected to my workstation PC, which has a Elgato capture card installed in the PCIe port. So I think we're ready to start the gaming montage. So on top of video editing and doing some light gaming, I think this laptop would be an excellent daily driver for general purposes and work. You can run Office 365, Office 2021, get to researching online as long as you have a quick internet connection. And of course you can watch high definition video on streaming services like YouTube or Netflix, etc. So would I recommend this laptop for use in 2024 and onward? I think my face in the video says it all. I could definitely see myself using this laptop as a daily driver for my work outside of my home business as a computer repair shop. And if you're using a ThinkPad L480 in 2024, let us know in the comments below and let's compare our experiences. So thanks a lot for watching and I hope you have a great day.